it's lovely to be able to uh, have this little time with you again in St James's. Uh, uh, I hope you enjoy the hymns and also uh, the reading from God's Word and the little message we have uh, from the Bible. Now today we're going to have the hymn that starts with the line, Tell me the story of Jesus. Write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. It's all about the story about the Lord Jesus. That's what the gospel message really is. So that's the hymn that we're going to sing this evening.
On the third day after he was buried, he rose again from the dead and he appeared to hundreds of people over 40 days and they even witnessed as he ascended back to heaven where he came from. We thank thee for all that he has accomplished and we thank thee that today he's able to save everyone he trusts in him. So Father, we just ask thee for thy help uh, this evening for this little gospel message and thy blessing upon everyone who hears it in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'd like to read a verse from the Bible, and it's found in 1 Timothy chapter number 2. And we'll begin at verse number 3. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Saviour, who will of all men to be saved, and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. And we look to the Lord to bless the reading of his word. Of course, the theme has very much been in the last few days <clears throat> ever since thursday afternoon the theme has been in every conversation and on every news bulletin on the front of every newspaper and at the head of every news website has been the death of her majesty queen elizabeth ii uh, there has been very few moments in my life where i would say that these are historical age defining epoch making events but on Thursday afternoon, of course, that was exactly that. Anyone that has been under that is under the age of 70 years old has never had another sovereign, has never been under the rule of any other monarch. And the Elizabethan age is now closed. And the King Charles the Third is now on the throne. The Queen seemed to be, uh, by all accounts, a steady, faithful, consistent Queen. It seems also from the reading of her life and the things that she has said over the years, she seems to have been a committed, genuine Christian. And she has left the greatest home on earth, the Buckingham Palace and the Windsor Castle and all these great homes that she had. And she is now in the best home of all. Not a home on earth, but a home in heaven. By the Saviour who died for her sins. She by the very nature of her, 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 her role, of course, as you, as you know, uh, she has never been able to offer very many opinions. We don't know who her favourite Prime Minister was. We don't know whether she voted for Brexit or not. We don't know how, uh, what her favourite county is in the country. Her very, the very nature of her role meant that we never really heard her opinions expressed very often. In fact, she never ha had written any books, but she did write one foreword in one book. That book was published on her 90th birthday by the Bible Society. And the title for that book that she had written the foreword in was this. The Servant Queen and the King She Serves. The Servant Queen and the King She Serves. As a testament and as a statement of her life. The King of Kings that she served the Lord Jesus Christ. The message that came through, the decrypted, encrypted message, the secret message that informed those with the know-how that the Queen had passed away was this, London Bridge has fallen. Now, if we had have heard that message on Thursday afternoon, we would have thought nothing of it. We would have thought that's a strange message for them to be passing. It's a strange message to hear. But that message was telling those with the know-how that that message was saying that the Queen has died. London Bridge has fallen. I want to speak to you just for a few minutes on a bridge that will never fall. A bridge that connects not one side of London to another. Not a bridge that spans the River Thames, but a bridge that spans the distance between us and God. The bridge, the mediator that is the man Christ Jesus. The Son of God, the King of Kings. Of course, the fact that there is a bridge implies that there's distance between us. And that's exactly what the Bible tells us. Our sins, the Bible says, have separated you from God. And there is a chasm. There is a distance which we can never bridge. The distance of our sin. A distance that would be forever if we do not find a saviour for our sins but a distance that has been 
traversed, a distance that can be bridged through the Lord Jesus Christ. Of course, any good bridge, I am no uh, engineer, but I, I do know this about bridges. If a bridge is to work, it has to touch both ends, doesn't it? There's no good having a bridge that stops halfway over the river. And that's exactly what the Lord Jesus Christ is. He's a bridge that meets both ends. He is the man, Christ Jesus. He touches us. He has come to where we are. He has took upon himself human nature. He is the man, Christ Jesus. But then he's also the son of God. Not only has he come to us, but he has always been with God. He has his hand on us both as our mediator and as our bridge to bring us back to God. He has left heaven so that we could go to heaven. He has took upon himself humanity. He has entered into the human family so that we can enter into God's family. Of course, if there's going to be a bridge, bridges are costly, aren't they? Tell me, Daniel, what was the cost of providing this bridge? I'll tell you the cost. We have it in these verses. Who gave himself a ransom for sin. He gave himself. He didn't just give his money. He didn't just give his time. He didn't just give out of his wealth. The queen was a very, a very, very generous person. And has raised so much money and given away so much money. But she has given out of her wealth. The Lord Jesus Christ has given all he had. He gave himself. He that was rich for our sakes has become poor. That we through his poverty might be made rich. It was a costly thing. It cost him his all. It cost him his blood. It cost him his life. And he went to the cross and died for our sins. It was a costly thing. Tell me, Daniel, is it certain? Is it certain? Can I trust this bridge? Every time there's a bridge created, there's a stress test, isn't there? There's a test of, there's a moment of time where, the, where there's a test being done to make sure this bridge can really stand a stress test. Well, I'll tell you, God has made sure he has placed his stamp of approval on the Lord Jesus Christ. He has raised his son from the dead and placed him in the highest pinnacle of heaven, telling all of us that the Lord Jesus Christ is worthy to be trusted. He's worthy for us to take our step and rest upon him. It's costly. It's trusted. And another thing, of course, about a bridge is there's no good having a bridge if it's closed. There's no good having a bridge if the entrance for that bridge is barred. Tell this bridge between us and God is open. The passage here says to get on this bridge, we have to acknowledge the truth. We have to acknowledge the truth about ourselves that we have sinned against God and those sins have separated us between God. We need to learn the truth about the Lord Jesus Christ, that he is a saviour and the only saviour. Savior. And we need to acknowledge the truth that we can never earn salvation by our own strength and with our own merit. And we have to trust our all in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Queen said in 2011, God has sent a unique person into this world. Not a philosopher, nor a general. Important though they be. But he has sent a saviour with the power to forgive. And that was true in 2011. And in 2022, the Lord Jesus Christ has still the power to forgive. He has the power to forgive all those at this moment right now. If you would put your trust in him. You know, really, at the end of all things, the Queen has lived a very privileged life. She has had great cars, lovely horses, great grand houses. She has had an audience with the mightiest of leaders. But really, you know, if we're being honest, all of that is worth nothing. The only thing that matters now about the Queen is that she's trusted in Christ. And that she made a decision on earth to put her faith in Christ that has settled and solved and secured her home in heaven. I trust that you would do the same. Thank you for listening. The Lord's my shepherd.